Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing whatever the heck I want. There's been some things I've been wanting to draw recently, so I felt like it was time for another video in this series. I don't have much else I want to say, so let's jump into it. So this first illustration I'm working on is kind of the whole reason I'm making this video. <laughs> I really wanted to draw these two things I'm including in this illustration for a few weeks now. Um, so as we can see, I have a picture of 17's Joshua and Albedo from Genshin Impact in my canvas to use as references. Seventeen has been releasing concept photos for their Japanese single that's going to be coming out and I really loved the pictures with the white outfits and the white tree branches. They're all just so cool looking and I really love the colors, outfits, and just the overall concept. So I've been really wanting to draw these pictures in my style. Um, so you might be wondering why is Albedo here? <laughs> I've also been really wanting to draw Albedo because he's going to be getting a rerun in Genshin. So it'll be possible for me to get him again. Plus a trailer for the 2.3 update came out and it got me really hyped. In it we kind of maybe see Albedo using ice powers, which is kind of odd because he's a Geo user. Uh, anyways, when I saw Albedo with the possible ice powers, I thought it'd be fun to draw Albedo in a winter scene. And when I thought of a winter concept, I thought of the 17 pictures. So I thought I would kind of mush them together. I looked through all the different pictures and decided to go with Joshua's picture because I really liked his pose and the way he was grabbing the branch. Uh, so now that the rough sketch is done, I'll do my cleanup sketch. I didn't feel like doing line art, so I'll just be coloring this cleanup sketch once it's finished. I think it's funny how when I make art for myself, I kind of get more lazy. <laughs> like I don't want to do line art, so I just don't. I think it's because like when I draw people's characters, I feel like I'm kind of making an art piece for someone. So I want to make it more clean and finished compared to when it's just for myself, I don't care as much. Have I said this before? I feel like maybe I said this before, but I don't really remember. <laughs> uh, anyways, we are now onto the shading. I wanted Albedo to be backlit and be in cool colored lighting. So I apply a dark teal set to multiply all over him and erase around the edges to give him a bit of a rim light. If you want an easy way to make an illustration look more interesting, this is a really easy way to do that. So now I'm kind of painting in the branches. I didn't do any cleanup sketch for them because I felt like it would be easier to paint them in. That way it's really easy to modify their shape to how I want it. I wanted the branches to sort of frame Albedo's face so our eyes will be drawn to looking at his face. I decided to be a bit stylistic of the branches and made them a dark teal. I could have made them a black or a brown, but I wanted to stick with the cooler colors. I also applied some light to them to make it look like they are being hit with the light coming from the background and also make them feel a little softer and not so harsh. Now that the branches are in place, I'll start applying shading to Albedo. So as I'm recording this audio, it is November 22nd. Albedo's rerun banner is coming on the 24th, and I really hope I'm able to get him. I've been preparing for him by getting the items I need to level him up. So I keep needing to fight the Geohypostasis and also hunt for Cecilia flowers. Uh, thankfully, there's a spot in Mondstadt that gets a lot of them in one area, so I've been going there almost every day to get the flowers. I'll be sad if I don't get Albedo because I've been spending the time getting the materials for him. <laughs> uh, but I think I have a pretty good chance because I am already at like 50 pity from the banner Toma was on. Also, I got Toma. Yay! Oh, and I do have enough Primo gems to reach full pity. So let's just hope I don't lose 50-50. I'll be really sad if I lose 50-50. It is possible though, because when I was trying to get Zhongli, I lost 50-50 to D-Luke. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't lose 50-50. I'll try to put in an update for all of you uh, as to whether or not I get him. Oh, also, it's kind of obvious by now, but I drew Albedo in an outfit that is similar to Joshua's instead of his usual outfit. I did this for two reasons. One, I really liked Joshua's outfit. And two, I didn't feel like drawing Albedo's mega detailed outfit. <laughs> the outfits in Genshin are just so detailed. Oh, and now we're on to the eyes. In Genshin, characters kind of have a sparkle shape for the pupil but I kind of just felt like drawing normal pupils, so I did. I'm actually quite pleased with how the eye coloring turned out. I feel like they really pop and look really shiny, and yeah, I just like how they look. 
Uh, for some reason, I sometimes struggle with tealish colored eyes and making them look bright and shiny compared to other colors. Uh, but this time they turned out really nice, I think. Now that Albedo is basically done, I'll start adding the finishing details. I added some more branches to the background. I didn't draw these ones, I just used a tree from the Clip Studio Paint Asset Library and changed the color and blurred out the branches. I thought adding these would make the background more interesting and feel less empty. Then to make the branches more branchy looking, I used a bark texture brush. The brush is white and black by default, but to make it so that it's the color of my branches, I set the texture layer to multiply. When you set white to multiply, it becomes invisible and you can see all the coloring underneath it. Uh, so yeah, that's what I did. This is a part I was very excited to do and it's adding the snowflakes. I wanted to make it look like Albedo was in a snowstorm, so I used the thin gouache brush because it's kind of an interesting shape and I applied snowflakes that are kind of moving in the same direction. Also, I applied these going the wrong way. <laughs> the hair is moving a bit to the right, but the snowflakes are going to the left. Uh, I fixed this afterwards. Uh, so to make the snowflakes look like they are moving a lot, I apply motion blur to them. I make sure to set the blur direction to the way the snowflakes are blowing. I feel like it's a really cool effect and really changes the feeling of the picture. And now this illustration of Albedo is done. I had a lot of fun working on this picture and I'm happy I got to work on it. Combining drawing something Seventeen related and Genshin related was really fun. Around this time of year, people are often looking for good deals. Well, you wanna know what's always a good deal? Skillshare. Skillshare has thousands of courses covering a wide range of topics like art, business, music, and so many more. There are classes for all interests and skill levels. One class I think is really neat is animation principles. Add playful personality to your animations by Jack Barlett. In this class, Jack will teach you how to use animation principles in your motion design. You can use these principles in any animation software, hand-drawn animation, or even stop-motion animation. Every principle is universal and applicable to any project. Skillshare is also curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. You're even able to try it for free. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. During this one month trial, you can take as many classes as you want. So start exploring your creativity on Skillshare today. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So this next thing I'm working on is a bit random. So I often see character meme kind of things on social media. And I always think they are funny and I want to insert my characters into them, but I never really get around to doing it. Uh, so now I'm getting around to doing it. <laughs> um, so the first format, as you can see, has three characters, a calm one, one with no energy, and one with too much energy. When I saw this, I instantly thought of Chase, Brayson, and Emmett. Oh, also all of the characters I'm drawing into these meme kind of formats are from my webcomic, My Next Door Neighbors. I post it here on YouTube and on Webtoon, uh, but YouTube has more chapters. My favorite character to draw for this one was Emmett. He looks so funny and it was fun drawing the expression. It's not really one that I've drawn before, <laughs> so it's fun to experiment with. To make it look like he is super hyper and moving a ton, I made copies of the sketch and moved them slightly to different spots and then blurred them out a bit. This gives the kind of moving effect. Uh, so here are my three boys. <laughs> the next one I found is a character doing finger guns at another character and that character blushes. I thought it was cute and it kind of made me think of Faith and Brayson, uh, so I drew them. So another reason I wanted to do these kind of funny meme drawings is because I've been missing drawing all of my babies. The chapters I've been working on are more focused on Doris and I love drawing Doris, but I also miss drawing all my other characters. In the most recent pages I'm working on, I have gotten to draw Faith, Chloe, Belle, and Zeke, uh, but I haven't gotten to draw Chase, Brayson, or Emmett in a long time, so I really miss them. Uh, so yeah, 
I miss drawing my other babies. Oh, so this one had a character that is Oblivious Sunshine and another character that is Whipped Fool. <laughs> so I drew Doris and Chase. I had to Google what whipped meant. <laughs> I kind of knew what it meant, but not completely. It kind of just means like a character that loves a character so much they would kind of do anything for them. Uh, but I wanted to make sure it wasn't something inappropriate. <laughs> Uh, I really liked drawing Chase's expression. I feel like it's really cute. This last one had a character that looked kind of wild and they have like a toddler backpack thing on and there is a calm character holding the other side. This made me think of two different groups of characters. The first being Emmett and Annabelle and the second being Chloe and Phil. I decided to go with Chloe and Phil because I hardly ever draw them even though I really like them. Chloe and Phil are kind of side characters, so I don't have to draw them as often. Chloe's kind of hyper, and she kind of does things in the spur of the moment, uh, whereas Phil is a bit more calm and thinks things through a bit more. Chloe and Phil are childhood friends, so you can imagine Chloe was the one almost getting into trouble, uh, but Phil prevented it. <laughs> So here are all the little drawings I made. It was fun to do something not very serious and kind of just have fun drawing random things with my OCs. So lastly, I wanted to draw in my sketchbook. I wanted to do this, but I didn't know what I wanted to draw in my sketchbook. And I couldn't make up my mind and I was being really indecisive and overthinking things. So I decided to use a wheel spinning app and I made a wheel with a bunch of different stuff listed on it. I basically just put whatever came to my mind, like different animes I like, video games, cartoons, webtoons, and so on. I kept the categories pretty vague so I could kind of pick any character or person within the series. Uh, so let's see what the wheel picks. So first we have the anime Link Click. Link Click is a Chinese anime and I am patiently, well more like impatiently waiting for season two of it <laughs> uh, because season one's ending was such a cliffhanger, like my goodness. Anyways, I'm drawing Lu Guan. The two main characters are him and Chang Zhaoxi. I briefly mentioned Link Click in one of my Q and A's, but in case you didn't watch that or don't remember, Link Click is basically about time traveling. Lu Guan and Chang Zhaoxi use their powers to do different things like solve mysteries or do things for someone like maybe the person wished they could have done something in the past but they didn't. Uh, but they always try to not actually change the past or do anything that would really alter things. For the most part, uh, Chang doesn't always listen. <laughs> what was kind of a funny coincidence is that the day I was working on this, the company that makes Link Click released a trailer for the second season and I am not ready like at all. I am not prepared. I don't want to spoil things, uh, but yeah, I'm not ready for season two, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm very ready. Uh, anyways, about the drawing, I'm using a purple Arteza erasable color pencil. Arteza sent these to me a while back and I used them in this video. I quite like them. They erase a bit better than my Prismacolor Cool Erase pencils that I have usually used. Uh, so these have been the main pencils I've been using in my sketchbook recently. To darken my sketch and make it a bit more permanent, I'm going over it with a purple Parku marker. It has a brush nib and a fine nib. I really like using the fine nib for line art or for cleaning up sketches. Recently when adding a kind of line art to my sketches, I like to use a lighter liner that is a similar color to the pencil that I used. It feels more forgiving and if I slightly mess up it isn't a huge deal because it's not like a black liner where it's super dark and noticeable, but like it's dark enough that it makes my sketch more seeable. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been doing more recently. It was really fun drawing Lu Guan. I had the link click intro and outro on loop as I was working on this and I was really enjoying myself. I always really like drawing Lu's and Chang's hair. Their hairstyles are so fluffy and I really love it. I love drawing fluffy hair. Oh, and I used a blue color pencil to add a bit of colors to his eyes. That way the eyes kind of stand out a bit more. Okay, so this sketch is done. Let's see what the wheel picks next. And we got BTS. If you don't know, BTS is a music group. Recently, I've been watching BTS in the Soup, so I searched that and this picture of Jin popped up. I liked his shirt, so I thought it might be fun to draw. 
Um, if you don't know what BTS in the Soup is, basically it's a show where you watch BTS do random things while they're on vacation. <laughs> Uh, Jin is always such a mood on In The Soup, it's really funny. I liked the portions where we could see him playing video games. I was amazed when he knew like all the secrets in Super Mario World. I love Super Mario World and I played it a ton as a kid, uh, so I also know a lot of the secrets. It was also a bit funny when he was kind of raging at Donkey Kong. <laughs> when he was playing Donkey Kong, the screen was blurred, but I still knew what level he was on and which Donkey Kong he was playing because of the music and sound effects. And I totally understood why he was getting a bit annoyed because the level he was playing is a really hard one and it's towards the end of the game. And it's one of my least favorite levels. <laughs> This drawing is fairly small, so I decided to stylize things and keep things a bit more simple. I'm kind of using what I call my chibi elf style, except he's not an elf. Once again, I'm using the purple pencil and parku marker. For sketchbook pages, I tend to like to stick to a color scheme. I just like how it looks and I guess it kind of makes everything feel more cohesive. I used the brush nib of the parku marker to fill in the hair. Also, these are water-based. I like to use water-based markers in my sketchbooks because they don't bleed through to the other side. I do occasionally use my Copic markers, uh, but I use the water-based ones more often. Water-based markers can be more streaky. Uh, so like when I was coloring in the hair, I made the marker strokes go in the direction of the hair. That way the streaks flow in the same direction that the hair is going and kind of gives it a bit more detail as well. For his shirt pattern, I took a few different marker colors and applied them in a kind of messy fashion. The shirt has a watercolor kind of look to it, but I couldn't really make these markers look like watercolor, uh, but I tried to mimic the pattern. I liked using all the different colors, it was fun. Oh, also, I drew a little RJ. RJ is Jen's BT21 character. The space felt kind of empty, so I added something that kind of filled it in. So here's my little sketch of Jin. I forgot his eyebrows, uh, so I added those later. <laughs> okay, now for the wheel. So my wheel gave me BTS again. I think the wheel is an army. <laughs> uh, since we just got BTS, I'll spin again. This time I got Genshin, but I drew Albedo, so I felt like I had filled the Genshin drawing void for now. Uh, so I spun the wheel again, and it barely chose Raven Saga. It almost chose Animal Crossing, which I would have been okay with. Uh, but I was really happy when I picked Raven Saga. I talked a bit about this webtoon in one of my other drawing whatever the heck I want videos. I drew a little sketch of Coralis. In case you missed that or don't know, Raven Saga is a webtoon created by Chihiro Hawe. Chihiro is one of my favorite artists and I love her work and Raven Saga is so good and I love all the characters. In the more recent chapters, Snow is introduced into the story and just like the other characters, she is also so adorable and I love her. I decided to draw her because she is a new character but she also fits in with my color scheme. <laughs> so I've been trying to draw in my sketchbook a bit more recently. For a while now, I've only been drawing in it like a couple times a month, which isn't much. Because I haven't been drawing in it very often, the sketchbook is taking me ages to finish. I've had this sketchbook since like March or something. One of the reasons I don't draw in my sketchbook as much is the chronic shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain I deal with. And for some reason, drawing traditionally seems to flare it up. I can draw digitally for a pretty long time, but drawing traditionally flares it up pretty fast for some reason. But I did notice something and that when I was drawing with my sketchbook on the table, the pain didn't really come. A lot of times when I draw in my sketchbook, I am on the couch or my bed and maybe with the way I sit or position my arm, it irritates it. Because I find it interesting, I was able to draw with my sketchbook at the table for a little over an hour without any issue. Uh, so maybe I just need to sit with my sketchbook at the table from now on. The pain in my elbow kind of started after I fell on my hand. I had tripped over Jaja when I was working out and I fell really hard on my arm and it kind of took all of my weight. And ever since then, I occasionally get a pain that flares up in my elbow. But I've been dealing with the shoulder and wrist pain for quite a few years now. It kind of just goes in spurts of flaring up. And uh, don't worry, I try my best to baby it and not overwork it. If I'm having a day where it's hurting more, I'll try to skip drawing or only get work that's absolutely needed to be done. Uh, so yeah, I'm not overworking it or pushing it. I make sure to take breaks and stretch and let it rest. If I'm having a bad day, I'll just try not to draw very much. 
So here's the finished sketchbook page. It was fun and different using the wheel to pick what I draw. I may use it more often because I can be very indecisive at times. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed getting to draw Luguan, Jin, and Snow. Also, here's the other art I made. I always really enjoy making these drawing whatever I want videos, and I hope you enjoy them as well. Before we end, I want to thank my wonderful patrons for supporting my work. I'm super thankful for them. Also, it is almost December, and if you join the mail club tier before the 1st of December, you will receive this meal pack filled with all kinds of things. Also, if your birthday's in December, I'll be sending birthday cards to my patrons in the $5 and $15 tier. I always really like making the birthday cards. Anyways, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!